morning. I'm down at the fabulous Ulster Museum. And I've come particularly down this morning to look at this exhibition here. It's called Hordes and <clears throat> it's the hidden history of ancient Britain and Ireland. A British Museum and Salisbury Museum Partnership Exhibition. And this is the only place in Ireland that this um, Hordes exhibition, that's a touring exhibition uh, on loan, um, that is going to be uh, exhibited and, uh, and seen. So, so I'm away in here to, to check out the, the gold and the silver. And I'm gonna salivate at the mouth because I love old. I don't like old. Or I don't like new gold. I don't like new silver. I like old gold and silver. Well, so let's see what we we'll see here. And this is the first information board about these ancient hordes. And the big question about these hordes is why were they buried in the first place? And I have a lot of friends who are into metal detecting. <laughs> and if this is the reward that you're going to get, I might turn to it myself. So here we have it. These hordes have been, uh, this room, exhibition room, has been set aside to show these various hordes. And I was hunting around to try and get the, uh, the starting point. So here we have a starting point. So earliest hordes, prehistoric hordes, are widely seen as ritual deposits. Although the reasons for their burial are being still debated. Suggesting, suggestions include stashes of metal des destined for recycling by smiths or offerings made to in the communal ceremonies to honour ancestors. Some items were used solely for the purpose of burial and never used. Gold objects were buried in hordes during the Bronze Age and that was uh, 2000 BC onwards to 600 BC, including the spectacular Moghan hoard at County Clare. Weapons and other objects were placed in bogs and rivers and deliberately damaged, placing them out of the reach of uh, human hands. So, we've got um, groups of flints from East Noyle, Wiltshire. And there they are. Now I've got a white headed pin from the World Horde Wiltshire. So these are these things are what three and a half thousand years old. Good that they survived. And I've got gold bracelets from the Modern Horde County Clare. And this is late Bronze Age. These bracelets are from the largest hoard of gold objects found in Ireland. And this is more from the Moggan hoard, the Great Clare Gold Find. <laughs> Have you ever found this? In 1854, near Moggan Lock, County Clare, what meant uncovered the largest gold hoard known from Bronze Age Ireland. It consisted mostly of bracelets along with rare, unique types of neck rings and gold collars. 950 to 700 BC, the quant quantity of gold weighed over 11 pounds. And you can read the rest of that down yourself. So this is all good stuff. Swords and scabbards and sc scabbard chip from Dyrus Hoard County Offaly. Now obviously there's no Roman hordes found in Northern Ireland or Ireland because the Romans never got to Ireland in the first place. 
So this is the direst hoard from County Offaly. Bronze Age bucket. Discovered in a bog in the 1820s, Darras is the largest hoard of bronzes from Ireland. Of an original 218 objects, 185 survived. And they were dating from 950 BC to 700 BC. And here we have them. Some of the uh, artifacts that look like hunting horns. Maybe they're not. 26 horns and 46 crotals, which make a rattling sound when shaken. Right on we go. Bronze Age. Bronze Age to Iron Age. Right. Later Bronze Age saw a huge increase in the burial of bronze metalwork hoards, with some of the largest hoards buried at the end of this period. So this is a massive hoard. And this comes from Peter's sports field, Adam, sorry. And spearheads from Broadness Hoard, Kent. Socketed axe and gold locking lock rings from North Cove, Suffolk. Ingots from the sea near Salcombe, Devon. And we've got uh, socketed axe heads from Sales Sales Salesbury Hoard, late Bronze Age. And there's a razor up here somewhere. Razor from Salisbury Hoard. This Iron Age Hoard contained older Bronze Age items such as this razor, and that's number five. So there's a razor, razor at number five. Yeah, that that thing there. I pre presume. And there's your axe heads, and then we've got miniature cauldrons from the Sol Salisbury Hoard. These are all Salisbury Hoard stuff. And this, is, this is a bit one I like. Chariot rings. Oh no, those are chariot rings up there. There's Buddhist and all that stuff. <coughs> so those come from um, Pod, Paulden Hill, Somerset. Torque and torque fragments from Snettersham, Norfolk, and that's a big gold hoard. Hoard, and that's around. Um, that was Iron Age, 150 to 50 BC, these would have been made. Hordes of torques were sometimes buried as part of uh, rituals. And look at, look at, look at the, uh, the detail on, on these items here. Unbelievable. Interlocking. How did they do that? You could hardly do that even today, with all the, the modern machinery we have. Look at this, isn't it beautiful? Imagine wearing this to a party on a Friday night, around your neck or wherever it goes. <laughs> Get a few glances, I can tell you. So here we are. This is the quite a quite a famous hoard hoards from Snatterson, Norfolk. Fourteen hoards of Iron Age gold, silver, and bronze jewellery and got some coins have been discovered at Snatterson, and they were buried in a large enclosure at the end of the uh, Iron Age. And this site acted as a focal point for several centuries and may have attracted visitors from a wide area. Uh, were bundled together, grouping together of around 200 torques of different age and styles perhaps reflects the relationship between their former owners, though we can only speculate that the reasons for their burial. My goodness, imagine coming across something like this. Oh, and here we have a, a coin hoard, a Roman coin hoard. And this coin hoard was massive. 
and they're not, as I said, found in, in Ireland, because the Romans never visited Ireland or got to Ireland. Maybe one or two did. So we've got Brentford Hoard, Greater London, the Iron Age and Roman coins from Erswell Hoard, Suffolk, gold and silver coins and silver and got from the Isle of White Hoard, and an iron bar from Hod Hill, Dorset. Number five is gold staters and flint nodule from Western Hoard once again. <laughs> this one's good. Um, these 14 gold coins were concealed inside a hollow piece of flint picked up by a grave digger on his lunch break in 1927. I'm sure he got a right shock. He shook it and the coins fell out, so he then poured a flask of, his flask of tea into the hole and to wash out the rest. So, uh, you, never know, you never know what you might find as a grave digger. So that's number five, and which is over there. And, and the, the coins were in that sort of wee money box thing there. Fabulous. And number six. Where's number six? Ah, there's six there. Looks like a wee, a wee head of somebody. Number six is ritual deposit at Ashwell, Hereford. Selby area Ward, North Yorkshire is number seven. Oh, this miniature pot is one of a pair that held 102 and 99 Roman silver denera and was probably buried around the reign of Commodius um, AD 180. So these are silver denera. Denera is a coin that's mentioned in the Bible. There you go. And then we've got number eight, hoard of silver coins and finger ring from Brixton Durrell, Dura, Wiltshire. That's a more recent uh, hoard. So that's number eight. Number nine. <coughs> this is another Iron Age and Roman coins from can't even pronounce that, somewhere in Dorset. So that's number nine. And if Andy's watching this, eat your heart out, Andy. <laughs> Get yourself away down to Murdoch Bay because there was a big hoard found down there. I don't think I've videoed it just yet. Number 10, Roman arm purse from Ferndale. The Romans uh, kept their money and he's uh, on their arm. Look at this. It's an arm purse. And then we've got number 11, which is coin moulds from Edderton, Somerset. So that's number 11, showing you how the coins were made. The mayor hoard, number 12, and the coins from Ancestor, Link uh, Lincolnshire, number 12 and 13. Look at the size of those wee, wee, I like wee raisins. Right, what does it say up here? So it's talking about the first hordes. I was talking about continuing ritual traditions. So that's, they're referring to the Ashwell hoard in Hereditshire. And lost and deliberately concealed hoards. So some hoards were accidentally lost. Once been in a purse that has rotted away. And some of them were hidden for safekeeping. And some of them were buried with people and all the rest. So what else have we got? So there's a glossary that you might be interested in uh, referring to. All the people involved with coin making and gold making and all the rest of it. So we've got I've got 
the Dorchester Hoard, AD 250, is number one. And number two is the East Harnham Hoard, Wiltshire, states from 293. We've got the Elfden, Elfden Hoard from Suffolk. Is number three. I'll, I'll find you this here. So hordes were buried at times of crisis because they thought that they were going to be stolen by marauders. And then uh, coin supply uh, dwindled. And there's a gradual move towards the use of bullion as means of storing and transporting wealth. Spectacular gold and silver hordes show the level of wealth in the hands of a small number of individuals at the end of the Roman Empire. The Hoxon hoard of Suffolk contained gold and silver coins, jewellery and tableware, including items decorated with Christian symbols. There you go. And this is a Roman Empress pepper pot. That's so all finely decorated. I mean, how did they do that in those days? So we've got word from Water Newton, Cambridgeshire. 30 Roman coins, and that's number four. And we've got coins and spoons and bracelets from the Hoxton Hoard. That's not lovely. Pierced coin and silver ring from Oxenborough, Norfolk, is number six. Oh, look at those. I like those. Hoarding up to the present day. Times of economic and political stability. So people hoarded things. They, they, they put it under the old apple tree for safekeeping. So this is, these are two uh, disc brooches from Pant Ne Hoard from Norfolk, dating from AD 800. I love all these old things. Bartham or Bellarmine jug used as a witch bottle. Uh, Downton, Wiltshire. People hid witch bottles in their houses to protect them from evil spirits. They usually contained iron pins or nails as well as material taken from the owner's body such as nail clippings, hair clippings and urine. Isn't that nice? This jug still retains some of its contents and was found in the ground behind Lloyd's Bank in Downton. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? And we've got number 10, the Forges Hoard from Stockbridge. Stocksbridge, South York. This group of objects probably belonged to someone making counterfeit coinage. It includes 11 fragments of metal objects and 7 clippings taken from the edge of silver coins of Charles II. <laughs> He's a bit of a faker. So number 9 was the coins in the jar. And there it is. That one there. Wartime Hoard of... Uh, 80 20 pound gold coins found in 2007 in a garden in Hackney. So, I've got a big timeline here. And it dates from uh, the hoard, these two hoards date from 4000 BC. And we've got all the hoards listed. So we've got Neolithic hordes. There's one on the Malone Road, would you believe? We've got Bronze Age hordes. There's one in Ballyclare. 1900 BC. We've got the Iron Age hordes. We've got the Roman hordes. Now, there's the Roman Hoard 39 um, at Murloc. I haven't seen it in here. Maybe I've, I've walked past it. We've got the Anglo-Saxon Hoards. Very few of them. 
got Viking hordes, there's one at uh, Antrim, AD 850. And we've got medieval uh, hordes and more modern hordes, or just the one. So they're all listed here. So what's this? That's number one. Muswell Hill Horde. <clears throat> and then we've got the, the, the Bow Street Horde of 17,660 Roman coins found by an archaeologist, archaeologist working on a building site at the centre of Bath. Isn't that fabulous? At some point they, in the 270s, they were left under the floor of a Roman building. Were these perhaps the savings of a local business or money collected at nearby temple site and baths? And that's a replica of the money bag from Bow Street. That's number two. This hoard was found by a boy digging in his garden in 1928. At the depth of 1.5 metres, he discovered pottery and all these uh, silver coins. That must have been a bit of a shock. That's fabulous. And here's the distribution map of uh, where these hoards are found. <clears throat> I'm going to home, home in uh, Northern Ireland and Ireland. So I've got Bally Clare. Number seven, County Offaly. Uh, number ten, Mugham, County Clare. That's number ten over there. So they're significant. And eight, nine, four, three, six, fifteen. So you can look those up for yourself. The T Tamlock, County Antrim Horde. So there have been quite a number in Northern Ireland and Ireland. Twenty-eight. Is the Ballin Ray is near Coleraine. And then we've got 39, which is Murlock again. And, uh, <coughs> oh dear. So we've got a few, we've got 48 and 40, and 51 and 49. Makara and Poibles near Antrim. There's a Viking hordes just there. Brilliant stuff. Malone Road Horde. Polished stone axes discovered near Ulster Museum. Accounts suggest 19 axes were deliberately buried. The hoard is remarkable given the size and weight of the axes and the finite quality of finish. A great deal of effort has gone into polishing the surfaces, leaving a wax like sheen. Too large and too heavy to be used to cut down trees or chop trees. Effort to create a uh, mirror-like surface suggests that it was their appearance and size that mattered. Why did they do this? Maybe they're ceremonial. Oh yes. Studies of tribal societies reveal that the use and production of stone axes form part of a more social and trading network. So the Malone Road Horde is on display in the early People's Gallery on level 2. And I might just go and see that because I'm interested. So we've got axes and, and uh, arrowheads. We've got the drum based horns. And they, they were part of a horde of four horns discovered in a bog in 1840 near Balamone, County Antrim, perhaps buried as an offering to the gods of the underworld. And they're up in the People's Gallery as well. And Down Patrick Horde and County Down, and I think I've videoed this before, and they're up in the People's Gallery on level 2 as well. Yes, I have definitely videoed that, but I haven't videoed the, uh, the gold torque that's supposed to be up there, but I think it's on loan. And this was the uh, Tamlock Horde from County Antrim. So there's, there's probably still a lot of stuff lying about, folks. So get your metal detector and get out there.
Roman Britain and Ireland. The discovery of Roman objects in Ireland is extremely rare, raises the question of the nature of contact between the Roman Empire and Ireland in the first four centuries. Some of the Roman material found in Ireland certainly indicates military incursions, but much can be accounted for by the presence of migrants, adventurers, traders and returning Irish who had been living in the empire or serving in the Roman empire, uh, army. It's not fascinating. for yourself. There's the Poddles one. And Macara. And the Merlock County Down one. Look at the lovely wee rings. And the wee, the wee, uh, wee lock on that. Not fabulous. Two gold rings and a silver military buckle. I saw that's a buckle. And then this is the County Antrim one. And then they're basically fragments. And they're, they're about to fall to bits if you touch those. And this is the Ballin Rest Silver Hoard near Coleraine. The Murlock Hoard, the County Down. Fallen from nearby dunes in a winter storm. Fine gold rings with coloured settings. Third object is part of a silver buckle which might have been loaned to a, a soldier. All three are Roman and date from the latter part of the 4th or early part of the 5th century. There you go. And again, the Balneres silver hoard. in the 5th century. And coins from, I haven't got these, these things on display. Viking hordes. Over 130 Viking Age hordes of precious metal from Ireland, typically silver, ingots, jewellery, and hack silver, never heard of it. So, that's my we walk round. Oh, I haven't done this now. Pot and coins from the Canadio hoard in Wiltshire. Largest coin hoard from Roman Britain found in 1978 near Middenhall, Mildenhall in Wiltshire. Part of the hoard of 54. 1951 coins buried in a large ceramic jar around AD 274. The rest of the coins were found in a poorly preserved lead box. And it's, it's, it was uh, it's surprising because it had uh, quite a number of early silver denera. And here we have them. And here's the ceramic pot that they were buried in. And that's just a repeat of what I thought went there earlier. So, as I always say, folks, come.
come and see this for yourself. It's not going to be here uh, forever. Um, Salisbury Museum and um, the uh, British Museum will want these back. In Northern Ireland, discoveries are thought to be treasure. Treasure can be reported to the National Museums of Northern Ireland or the Historic Environmental Division uh, Department for Communities. So you have to declare these any findings and then you might get a cut. Or the landowner might get a cut as well. And if you want to uh, get down to the Ulster Museum to see the fabulous Gold Hoards Collection Exhibition. Uh, you'd need to get down here before the 31st of March because um, this is a, a travelling uh, exhibition. It's only on loan um, and it, it'll, it'll be away. But the next major <coughs> exhibition is uh, an exhibition of Leonardo uh, da Vinci uh, drawings. So, um, if you're interested in art, and if you're interested in Leonardo da Vinci, uh, this um, a life in drawing exhibition will will be on here from the first of February to the sixth of May, and the museum staff are. Uh, very excited about this and uh, uh, I'm not going to come down in the first month I let the, the crowds uh, drift by and then uh, come early some morning but the fabulous Ulster Museum come and see it for yourself